you'll see the last section is entitled Resources. We'll go ahead and open this link here. And there it goes. Sometimes, depending on how you choose to open it or your firewall security, you may need to copy and paste the address and from the email directly into your URL box here at your browser. And here you can see it opened and we'll go ahead now and we're going to go back up to step two I suppose. Click the icon at the left, create a class notebook. And we've done that. We're going to give it a title. So in order to give it a title we need to go to our gradebook and see what our class is. This is period two gifted honors. So call this period two gifted honors chemistry and as my parenthetical note says there to make sure you include the year because after you do this a couple years in a row you will get confused so I'll click next and you'll notice that this is just information so we can click past that here is where we would uh, give a co-teacher or paraprofessional um, some other adult that uh, has access to your gradebook we would also want to give them access to perhaps your class notebook so that they could edit documents or upload documents grade documents what whatever do as the teacher they might need to be able to do and you would want to give them access I'm going to go ahead and click next I teach solo this is where we're going to input our student names and you can actually input them by their last name or their student ID number here in Miami-Dade because the this is linked to the database however that's a very time-consuming uh, manner of setting these notebooks up so what I've done is I've written a spreadsheet that will convert the data that comes out of the gradebook so here's my gradebook go ahead and open your gradebook and we'll go right here where it says I'm on step uh, I'm on step six here. Open your gradebook above the first nine weeks. That's right here. You'll see a down arrow. Click it. Export grades. Letter format. I don't think it matters. Down here at the bottom of my screen, it gives me the option of opening or saving it. I'm just going to open it. So again scrolling down you'll see select and copy just the student names and ID numbers so here we go I'm selecting I'm going to copy and then you'll notice paste into this spreadsheet in column A3 it will I'll put into column D in the correct format so here we go paste and there's my outputted, correctly formatted for OneNote, the data. Next you'll notice it says to select and copy from column D from the last student pasted in column A. So we'll go here, all the way down. You don't need to copy the entire thing, just copy that first column. paste directly into the text box on step four of OneNote. So let's go to the text box on this OneNote. Now, I've seen this happen before. It just happened to me last class that I did. When you go to paste, sometimes depending on the invisible characters that your browser may insert into the data, you may only get one student like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a Microsoft Word document. We've still got those names in memory. We'll click a blank document. We're going to paste without format. And you can see that there is some kind of invisible character incorporated into that data that is causing those names to be uh, spaced apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to replace and 
there's a button over here, more. We'll click that. We'll come down here to special character. And we're going to say we want to remove the paragraph mark. And we're going to replace it with, click that box, a space. And we'll just hit replace all. Okay, we're done. So here we have all of our data as a paragraph now instead of a list. We'll take that, come back over here, X that one out, paste that in. You'll notice all of the names are there now. The red lines are gone. Going back to the instructions, process the students. So we hit the next. Now in step seven of the instructions, we should think carefully about the sections we want. Now, if you're a new teacher or new to using OneNote, you may not know. So maybe you'll try out the recommended sections. I won't do that. I'll take out handouts. I use class notes. I use homework. I don't use quizzes. I do use labs. Let me hit next. It's giving me create. And it's going to take a few minutes. At this point you can go ahead and clean up your files by closing the ones that you had opened. Create these guys. Okay, at this point you'll be notified that your notebook has been set up. I'm going to go ahead and download the class notebook at it. It's going to install the buttons for modifying in the uh, class notebook. When you have installed it, you'll see up here that you get these buttons to go ahead and modify current notebooks. So that way you don't have to go back to Office 365 to find that option. Well, thank you very much for listening. This is Sean Baytall, John A. Ferguson, Senior High Chemistry Instructor on how to set up Microsoft OneNote.